Before we got married, my husband used to live in a nice little house that he kept and added my name to the deed. We use it as a vacation home now. We only use it two or three times a year, and so we sometimes let friends or family stay there for a few days or a week if they want to get away. This has never been a problem for us. But now we were asked to let my estranged sister and her husband stay, and I said no. My husband is 100% in agreement with me on that. My sister and her husband are currently homeless. They were renting for several years and in the same place for a long time, but got kicked out due to issues with their landlord, and they're in desperate need of a place to stay until they can find a more permanent place. Background, my sister and I were very close growing up. My best friend for my entire childhood was a guy. For those who can guess, the guy is now married to my sister. I always had a massive crush on him, and honestly, I was in love with him by the time we were 20. My sister also had a guy she liked, but not super well. When I was 20, we were all at a party, and the guy my sister liked flirted with me. My sister was angry, even though I didn't flirt back, and told him I wasn't interested. She told me we don't do anything with guys the other liked. I agree. I never would have done that to her anyway. A year or two later, my relationship with my best friend changed. He was flirting with me and I was flirting back. He was more physically affectionate and he started kissing me and it felt like we were slowly becoming more than best friends. Things were progressing like that and then suddenly, I discovered that he and my sister were a couple and had started sleeping together. He told me he wanted to keep his options open and my sister told me she really liked him and wanted me to understand. I called her a hypocrite for doing that when she turned on me for the guy she'd liked flirting with me after I turned him down and then promising and making me promise we'd never do this to each other. She told me it was different. I told her I would never trust her or look at her the same way again. They told me I didn't own him. I told him he was messed up for leading me on when he wanted my sister. Her family took my side afterward, especially my other two siblings. I haven't seen or spoken to my sister or her husband since. Our parents helped set up the request for a place to stay, and they were disappointed when I said no. My other sister and brother were firmly on my side and disgusted. My sister and her husband would even dare ask me. My sister said at least I can live out my dream because I'm married with kids and she can't have any, and the least I can do is put aside petty childhood drama to help them not be homeless. My sister and her husband called me a witch for refusing, and even my parents said I was going too far with the estrangement by refusing to help. Am I the idiot? They will never leave if they move into a nice, beautiful, empty vacation home. Any place they'd be able to get on their own will be much worse than the house they're borrowing, so they'll have absolutely zero motivation to save up and move out, and a lot of motivation to make sure they always have an excuse why they have to stay. They'll be dependents, mooching off family forever, and you'd be their enabler. By refusing to enable their financial irresponsibility and house them for the rest of their lives, which is what's actually being demanded here, you're giving them the motivation to become functional adults. You're not the idiot, no matter how you feel about your sister. This right here. The whole backstory with your sister is actually irrelevant. Even if you had a fantastic relationship with her, you wouldn't be the idiot for refusing this request. And here's why. They won't be homeless. They'll move in with your parents or friends or whatever. They'll be uncomfortable and cramped, which will motivate them to get back on their feet and get their own place. Even a tiny, crappy apartment is better than a room in someone else's house or a couch. OP, you owe your sister a big thanks. She got the guy and is now homeless. You got a runner-up and he gave you a holiday house. And remember, sis and ex-best friend do not care about you. Your ex-friend used you when he wanted and abused you when you complained. Your sister is hypocritical and selfish. Now they want something from you and you're supposed to give them anything and everything? No, sorry, it doesn't work like that. If you treat people like crap, you get nothing from them ever again. By the way, are you concerned that they might go to your cabin anyway? I would make sure to secure the property and locks. My son is marrying Wendy and the wedding is this summer. She's not close to her own mother for multiple reasons and is pushing hard to have me fill in the gap. I'm not comfortable with it at all, especially with how hard she's pushing. She has multiple times overstepped boundaries, such as inviting herself along, discussing very personal issues, being very touchy, etc. Due to these issues, we're not close, and my daughters are not huge fans of her. She asked me this week if I would make the cookie table for the wedding. It's something the bride's own mother would do with other female relatives. This is the first time I've heard about this tradition, and I've done some research. I would have to make over a thousand cookies from scratch to feed the wedding guests. I asked my daughters if they wanted to do it, and the answer was a strong no. I informed her that I couldn't do it, it was way too much work and I didn't have the time. 
She told me, okay, and I thought that was that. My son called me up and told me I was a huge jerk, that Wendy had been crying about it, and that I should step up. I'm still refusing to do it. Am I the idiot? Edit. Did daughter-in-law tell me the number? Yes, she stated 1,000 to 1,200 for 250 guests. What about family helping? She isn't close to her family, so her side is out. My parents are at home, and I'm an only child. My husband has a sister, and I doubt she wants to help. My daughters don't wish to, so it would basically be me. Over 1,000 cookies? Not the idiot. One person never makes 1,000 cookies. All the women on both sides each bring their signature cookie, or bring a bakery's signature cookie. In large families, this usually ends up in the 1,000s. For smaller families or families with fewer bakers, it's maybe a few dozen. There's a huge empathy gap here from you towards your future daughter-in-law. It sounds like she has little to no family support. She's likely hoping to be close to her in-laws. It may also mean that her eagerness is causing her to display poor social skills. It also sounds like you and your daughters only see that as an imposition to you, not offering any grace. From the tone of your writing, it sounds like you've decided she's annoying and you and your daughters are mean-girling the heck out of someone who wants to be close to you without having adult conversations about boundaries. You are the idiot, in general, based on how you write about this young woman who seems to have had a rough go family-wise. Agreed 100%. This is a classic case of, do I have to? Of course not, but it's the kind and right thing to do. The coldness and lack of empathy are sad to read. Why not work with the daughter-in-law to compromise and set more realistic expectations of what you can manage, and work harder, and spend some of your social capital as the mother of the groom to get some help from others to make something happen, even if it's not 1,000 cookies? Out of 250 guests, the only ones you can ask are your daughters, who are also cold enough to say no. Something isn't adding up. This is not what joining a family should look like. I, 44 female, have been with my fiancé, 46 male, for 13 years, and we've been engaged for four and have three girls, a tween, a pre-tween, and a toddler together. After a lot of obstacles and two periods before our engagement where we decided to not officially break up but take a break from each other, we had set a wedding date that was supposed to be this June. My fiancé has a lot of baggage from his childhood and doesn't do well with frustration. He's a self-proclaimed avoidant introvert. I have also had childhood issues where my parents always made me feel guilty about how much I cost and never would give me any money to get new shoes, which got me excluded by my peers. Yes, I've been in every therapy about this. I work as a front desk agent at a hotel and used to be a member of the concierge staff at a condo. My fiancé is the main breadwinner in our household and I never felt comfortable sharing my financial struggles because he was so perfect at everything. My fiancé and I have talked throughout our relationship about buying a home and investing in fixer-uppers. He works for a real estate investment firm. But long story short, a year and a half ago I needed to file for bankruptcy. I was dealing with creditors overdrafting my accounts and Discover was suing me, so I decided the responsible thing to do was file. It caused a lot of tension, but he said he didn't want to back out of this wedding because he didn't want our daughters to think he gave up when things were hard. However, we hit another bad period after he found out a credit union denied my application for an account due to a report. He told me we would still own a house together someday, but that family home wouldn't be for another four or five years. Then, three weeks ago, he broke it to me that he'd been in the process of closing on a property. It's a duplex. I know others use half of a duplex as a family home and own it with their spouse. He admits that he would have wanted my name on it before the bankruptcy. I was furious, but instead of being sorry, he said that if we wanted this to work, he needed me to verbally affirm that I understood and accept why he didn't involve me in this purchase. I was speechless and walked away. It was a huge breach of trust, and I don't think it's unreasonable to say I deserve a better man than someone who'd do that. If he really loved and trusted me, as he said in therapy, he wouldn't have done this. I ended up giving him the ring back out of anger. I regret doing that now, but we got into another fight after he refused to even tell me what he did with the ring. I told him I deserve better than a man who just shut his partner out of finances and gets so cold after a fight. I told him to leave the house briefly, but he just moved back in. Yet he said he wants us to tell the girls the wedding is off and that he's here to ease the transition. He offered to pay the rent until the lease was up, but said he would find somewhere else for him to stay. Am I the idiot for my reaction?
Let me get this straight. You're 44 years old, still making spending mistakes, don't pay half of the bills, he pays most of them, you took out loans with high interest, lied about it, filed for bankruptcy, which means you won't qualify for a home loan for at least 10 years, and you're mad he bought a house and didn't put you on the deed because you're not paying for it? You are financially irresponsible and dishonest. Grow the heck up. You're too old to be making financial mistakes. You're a leech and taking advantage of him financially. Please, do him a favor and leave. You are the idiot. OP. He'll be alone with all his money and I'll find somebody who wants to plan a future with me, including buying a house together, investing in things together, raising our kids together. With three kids and bad credit? Bless her. Not just bad credit, but terrible credit that would make it impossible for her to buy a house with him. Ridiculous. Opie is delusional if she thinks she's ever going to be able to get a mortgage for at least 10 years. Realistically, it's probably closer to 15, maybe even 20. I just can't get over her faux outrage at him being dishonest when she's been lying for years. At 44 years old, Opie ain't buying a house in this lifetime. Opie, you are the idiot. You are a delusional child who seems to not understand anything about how the world and finances work. You don't understand you will not qualify for a mortgage for years, if ever. Nobody is putting you on a loan application, yet you comment like there's some long line of suitors looking to take on a single mom with three kids, a 450 score and a recent bankruptcy. You need a reality check and therapy and some financial literacy classes. My wife, 33, and I, 35 male, have been married for eight years. My wife gave birth to a baby girl a couple of years ago. My wife was struggling a lot with her emotions in the weeks leading up to labor, and she pretty much hated me and started resenting me. When she gave birth, she didn't want me in the operating room. This broke my heart and devastated me, but it was my wife's choice and I respected it. Post labor, my wife was much better with her emotions, and she apologized for how she'd behaved in the months leading up to labor. She said she was just extremely nervous about labor and for our baby. I told her there was no reason to apologize and we both put it behind us. However, it's always on the back of my mind how my wife didn't trust me during her toughest moments. A couple of weeks ago, I fractured my left arm. I was outside and falling backward and I used my arms for support as I was falling back and I fell on my arm. The pain was excruciating and I still have no idea how I didn't pass out from the pain. It was clear from one look at my arm that it was horrible. The pain was too much and I even cried. I called my sister in tears and she came over in 15 minutes and drove me to the hospital. Long story short, I had broken my arm and the doctor said it would require surgery and they would do it the next day as surgery would require preparation. I was temporarily put in a sling and was given pain meds. My wife came over to the hospital an hour later after I called and told her what happened. When she came over, I realized she was the last person I wanted to be with. So I told her I didn't want her here, it was unnecessary and my sister was already there. I also told her not to come the following day. My wife was sad and asked me why but I was in a terrible mood so I told her to just leave. My wife wanted to talk more but my sister took her out because I was in no mood to talk. My sister stayed with me overnight at the hospital and then the next day too. The surgery took a few hours and I was told to stay at the hospital for a few more hours before they discharged me. I was put in a cast and the doctor said they would remove it in eight months. My sister then dropped me home after I was discharged from the hospital. My wife and I are pretty open about our feelings and a couple of days later we had a heart-to-heart -heart discussion. My wife told me she had felt extremely hurt when I asked her to leave the hospital and she asked me why I didn't want her at the hospital. I told her subconsciously that it was because I didn't feel safe with my wife in my toughest moments and she too didn't trust me a couple of years earlier when she was going through her tough moments. My wife then cried a lot and we didn't talk much after that. The next day, we decided to start looking for a couple's therapist to help us work through these issues. Am I the idiot? Look, you resent your wife and never properly forgave her for the decision to leave you out of the operating room. You claim to have moved on, but you just let that resentment fester. Couples therapy is your best bet here. This isn't hopeless if you're both willing to work on communication. Everyone's the idiot, but it is fixable. Pregnancy hormones can cause resentment towards loved ones. I think the wife is in no way the idiot for not wanting her husband to be present in labor. She can't help her feelings and hormones. She didn't ask him to magically get over it, though. She apologized, and he practically told her he was magically over it when he wasn't. She thought they were fine. He is contradicting himself. You cannot say you put the past behind you and, in the same sentence, say it has always been in your mind. That is not putting the past behind you. 
His feelings were very valid. Pretending they weren't there was not. OP, you are the idiot for that reason. Nothing says love like holding a grudge for two years. My niece has been married for two years, and I'm honestly so happy for her because her husband is amazing. He's kind and helpful, treats her like a princess, and is charming and funny. It's clear that he loves my niece a lot and would do anything for her. I told my niece she hit the jackpot with her husband a few days ago, which has caused some issues between me, my other nieces, and their partners. For some context, my niece had their first child a few months ago, and because her friends have been telling her horror story after horror story about women who gave up their careers to raise children, she's been feeling scared and stressed. To alleviate her anxiety, her husband has moved assets he owned prior to the marriage into her name and made sure he legally wouldn't be able to take them back if they were to divorce. I personally think it's a wonderful gesture. On top of that, he's been leaving work early or working from home whenever she's feeling overwhelmed or just wants him to stay with her. Obviously, not everyone is fortunate enough to be able to leave work whenever, but I still find it sweet of him, especially as she refused to hire a nanny so she would have help while he's working, which he doesn't get upset at her over. He's my brother-in-law's favourite son-in-law, so my other two nieces and their partners, who were there then, are upset because they think I'm favouring him. Even though he is objectively the better catch, I told them that all of their partners were amazing too, in order to soften the situation, but it didn't help. One of my other nieces is especially mad because I was praising him for things that normal people just can't do, which is unfair to them. Am I the idiot for saying my niece hit the jackpot with her husband? Makes you wonder why they are so sensitive. Did they marry deadbeats? You are not the idiot. You are allowed to praise someone without it automatically becoming a measuring contest. This was not about the other niece's husband at all. On the surface, this seems fine, but if I dig a little deeper and consider the hurt resulting from what you said and your weird admiration for him, I feel it was either tone deaf and insensitive or intentionally pointed. So, he's the favourite son, nephew-in-law already, he's got assets and wealth and a flexible job the others don't. Your, oh no, your boyfriend is great too, was insincere by your own admission and you're surprised the others bristled at your comments? You are the idiot. I guess I don't believe you innocently said, wow, what a great guy, which is not something anyone, let alone multiple people, would react to unless something else was going on. Yeah, there is also something to the phrasing, hit the jackpot after the husband moved money around that is a bit icky. It's way too literal here. He isn't out there being a super dad or super husband and being praised for staying up all night with a baby. He just moved money around. Lady, you have no idea what goes on behind closed doors. A couple of kind gestures does not mean he doesn't have flaws. You have no idea what goes on when you're not around. And you said it in front of other nieces with spouses. It sounds like you are unhealthily obsessed with the guy. It's not your relationship. But out.